In this issue of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, we're going to talk about COVID-19 outcomes. Who is at most risk? What are those risk factors? And why is it so difficult for us to get a good handle on what the disease mortality rate really is? So stay tuned. Let's dig into outcomes. Welcome to Shareable Science. Science you can share. Let's dive into the topic of outcomes for individuals that are affected with COVID-19. And let me acknowledge right off the bat that if you or someone you love is affected with COVID-19, these numbers are gonna feel very different than if you just hear this as a member of the general population. I just wanna acknowledge that um, and, um, and just say that you're in my thoughts, you're in all of our thoughts as we work our way through what this epidemic looks like. It is, um, we're all in uncharted waters here. The good news that I can give you is that the vast majority of individuals that are affected ultimately recover and recover fully, many in a week or two with a really mild case. Let me give you the data that we do have, and that comes primarily from China because they have a more complete set of data because they've had more time for individuals to be affected and more importantly, to recover. So of 80,000 Chinese cases, 87% of those individuals fully recovered. 9% are still in recovery, 4% passed away. Now, before you focus on that number and freak out a little bit, let me just say, the experts say that that number is almost assuredly higher than the actual mortality rate. One of the challenges is we don't have a good idea of what the denominator is for COVID-19, which is the number of people that actually have a COVID-19 infection. So it looks like these numbers are gonna come down. A lot of experts think that it's probably somewhere around one to one and a half percent. Um, that is gonna take a while before we actually have a really firm number in hand. Um, but I just wanna note, even still, that one and a half percent is 15 times higher than the mortality rate for seasonal influenza. So it is something that we significantly wanna pay attention to, but this 4% number is most likely much higher than the real number. I will say that there are some categories of individuals that seem to have a poorer outcome, a more severe course of the disease or a higher mortality rate. And you've heard these groups, these are the high risk groups. The first one is older individuals. The data from China suggest that an, the people who had COVID, who were diagnosed with COVID-19, that were zero to 40, 0.2% of those individuals died. So 0.2% of the individuals who were 40 and younger diagnosed with COVID passed away. In comparison, 10% of the individuals 70 and above who were diagnosed with COVID passed away. So there is clearly something happening with older individuals. Their bodies are less able to fight off the infection or they're more susceptible to the issues around the, around the lung complications. We know that COVID-19 is a lower respiratory disorder. It primarily affects the lungs. That also leads us into the next health category, which is if you have any one of these prior conditions, you are at a higher risk of serious complications. Some of these are because you have a depressed immune system. Maybe you've been treated for cancer. Maybe you take an immunosuppressant. Others may be because you already have challenges, coronary, um, you've got cardiovascular disease, for example, or high blood pressure challenges with, with, um, with lungs and with, and with regulating blood pressure. This is true whatever age you are. And I should also note that young people, even though the very first risk factor I gave you was for older individuals, you are not out of the woods. The data that we're seeing out of Europe and early data from the United States suggests a significant number of younger people are finding themselves in the intensive care. And even if you have a mild case of symptoms, you can pass a more serious case on to someone else who's in these risk categories. And then the third category is something that's relatively new that we're really only hearing about within the last several days. And that's a difference between men and women, that men seem to have a higher risk of developing COVID-19 and have more serious complications and are dying at a higher rate. 
Some of that is probably due to social factors like smoking, that in many of these countries, men smoke at a higher rate than women, and so they already would find themselves in one of these categories. But the data suggests that that might be a part of it, but there's something else happening, something different between the way men and women's bodies either respond, their immune system responds to the disease, or the level of, of, uh, of acute response, an over um, immune response. We don't have good answers on that. That's something that we're gonna have to tease apart over the next several days. All right, that's a lot of content. Important point, the vast majority of individuals recover. If you or your loved ones are in these categories, please take extra precautions. If you've got questions for us that you'd like us to answer on a future episode of Shareable Science Beyond the Blog, please email them to askdrlam at hudsonalpha.org. Ask Dr. Lamb at HudsonAlpha.org, and we'll answer those in an upcoming session. Okay, hold fast to this number, th this fact. Don't freak out about this fact. Take action if you find yourself down here. Thank you for watching this episode. Share it with others that you think might find useful. And be safe, everybody. Take care.